Today's Stillmates Warrior partner is Sheath Underwear. And we want to take the time to thank them for the offer that will be provided during this episode and for teaming up with the podcast to provide a better listening experience for you. You can find out more about Sheath Underwear at sheathunderwear.com or by visiting stillmatesWarrior.com. What's up, guys? Still Mace Warrior here. And before we get started, I just want to mention our partner for this month, podcast partner, which is Sheath Underwear. You can check them out at sheathunderwear.com. And if you use the promo code SMW Sheath on checkout, you get 25% off your first order. I dig it. I, I have to say thank you to them. And uh, hopefully I see a lot of you guys uh, macing with some awesome underwear. All right. So uh, today I'm actually really excited. Uh, I don't know if you know this, Valerie, but I always get excited over women warriors. I call them women <laughs> warriors because we don't see a lot of women macing and like for you and your background, kettlebells and stuff like that. So I'm just going to highlight a couple of things. Your list of like... Uh, oh, your background is so like <laughs> immense that I'm just going to just highlight a couple of stuff. So we have uh, Valerie Pulaski with us today. She has over 20 plus years of professional training and coaching expertise. She's co-owner of Art of Strength in New Jersey and owner of Punch Kettlebell Gym in Far Hills. And she's also founder of Kettlebell Sport USA, which I want to get into that too, because that's interesting. And presently, she's a world champion in kettlebell sport. She's a Team USA three-time gold medalist, and she's also first woman veteran above the age of 50 to achieve a master of sport in 24 kilograms kettlebell long cycle. So Valerie, tell us about what your story is in fitness before you became superwoman, because to me, in my head, <laughs> you're superwoman. Where did it begin for you? And then finally, like kind of what led you to like competitive mace? So it's funny, I, I was in the t profession of television before. That was my degree, and I was working for WOR-TV at the time at Channel 9. I started going to the gym before work and getting in shape because at the age of 26, I was in the worst shape of my life. I couldn't walk up a flight of stairs. I had given up all my activities and things like that, and I said, I'm on my way to 30. This is going to have to get formalized. So right. I finally took up to go to the gym, and it was intimidating at first, but I, you know, stayed with it, doing the machines and things like that, moved into the free weight area. And I think the rest is history because I became uh, attached to the gym more than I was to my job. And when I could find a way to make that transition and get into training, I took it immediately. No regrets, no looking back. And I'd been in TV during its heyday. So nowadays, um, I, <laughs> I honestly feel like I was retired from that point on because it's all play for me. Right. And it's great. I went into full-fledged the fitness industry, and it's been 20-plus years. So at 2008 is when it took a turn. I was in the traditional manner. I did bodybuilding. I've been a triathlete and things like that. And somehow between a client and then seeing things on YouTube, I think YouTube was the initial sense of being able to see people do stuff with this thing called a kettlebell. Right. And... For years, a colleague of mine would say, don't do that. You'll rip your arms out of the socket, it looks like. And I said, okay. And then I said, no, that's, you can't. People are doing it. Right. <laughs> so finally, we did get to pick that thing up. And it was interesting because he ended up at a seminar alongside me. And I go, here, we're going to get to do this. And we're doing it with the right person because I found Anthony DeLulio from The Art of Strength and Punch Kettlebell Gym. And I definitely appreciated his, not only style, but his delivery, his teaching, and the methods that he was employing. So I gravitated towards that, went full-fledged into the certification with him, and then the licensing to the program. And so Punch Kettlebell Gym was the first episode of opening. Um, prior to that, I'd done lots of fitness programs, adventure boot camp out in the park with women at 5.30 in the morning, just tremendous success, and impacting people's lives in a positive, supportive manner. So with the kettlebell came, that was in 2008, and he delved more into what it was originally that was here in the United States, because there was only so much that the Russians could tell us, and he found vintage strength. And with vintage strength came the thick grip barbells and dumbbells, and I loved that, because I dig anything and appreciate something that's different, and but not just a gimmick. Right. If it's 
full-fledged. It's got some history to it. It's what they did in the beginning. They had something going on. And physical culture, I kind of knew that buzzword, and I had some uh, magazines that clients had given me from, you know, the antique store. So, and, and, and look, my parents, my parents were 90 when they passed a few years ago. So way back when, I was kind of familiar with this. He brought in the dumbbells and barbells, and then along came with it were clubs. So the clubs were an intriguing aspect. And the mystery also was, well, why did they get tossed aside? And where did they go? And no one's using them. And you're finding them in the closets at YMCA. (laughs) (laughs) Right. So again, an interesting modality to address a situation that so many people have with a a degrading area, shoulders. Everybody, you know, would have it. So that was back then the initial approach and the um, addition to the training that we were offering. In comes on the feed one day the um, the Adex Club. Mm-hmm. And I'm looking at this and I take a look and I said, are you kidding me? This thing you can adjust and it's one and you can make it different variety of weights. Now, I, I have a set of those, um, what are they called? Um, what are the, the blocks. You know, those nestling dumbbells because you only have so much space to put stuff so i go you know what give me six of those things right now because i know i'm going to use them in my training and then somebody's going to want to take one off of me or two you know the clients (laughs) are like give me that i've got to have it yeah yeah and that was four years ago so i started out with that and then the emergence of you know this the social media is great because we see what each other is doing rick came along rick um brown and says to don hey can you make a longer handle on that thing and i'm still trying to play and do and work with the clubs and then all of a sudden i say can i have one of those (laughs) wait i've got to see this thing yeah and so coincidentally we were uh i started competing in kettlebell sport not just doing the fitness side of kettlebell training and lifting in that manner of old strongman ways i I was intrigued because i wanted to do something with it I i love competition let me perform at what I train with and put it to the test is is always something to keep striving for. So in kettlebell competition, we suddenly started to develop, let's bring something else to the table that other people might want to do and is fun and exciting. And we'll call it vintage strength games. Mm. And one of the aspects of course was a mace, you know, that's something that we can compete at. They do use it in Persia and the Gada. And so it's related. And we talked about it for a year, actually. (laughs) We had it on the drawing board. And when it came to the December competition here uh, three years ago, it was still kind of, and I said, everybody get up on the platform, grab one. So we had five platforms. People who didn't know what they were doing did know what they were doing. Joe Magarelli was the one guy down at the end doing beautiful work. Everybody else was just, you know, whipping Everyone. the thing around struggling. But I was taking video because this was amazing. And it was the first full fledged launch of the Vintage Strength Games and the Mace 10 to 2 competition. Although some people were doing 360s. It was just mayhem. But <laughs> the response to that became, why didn't I know about this? Why I would have gone. And I said, Oh my gosh, you know, we got something here. So we kept going along with it. And again, this AKA vintage strength games coincides with a lot of the competitions because at least we have people there, the judges and putting people up on the platform. A lot of people, if they're not sure they get to do a demo or try it. And I had to do it. (laughs) Right. So meanwhile, I'm like pouring my heart into kettlebell for a lot of years because I just love it. And again, I'm older, but it's something that I can do and strive to. I, I just want to be the best. I, right. I just want to take my ability. But then I said, I have to get up here and do this mace thing. You know, I can't just stand around. I gotta, I'm a participator. So I get up there, and I mean, it is ugly, the stuff <laughs> in the beginning. And I'm just like, heave ho, heave ho. <laughs> and one time at, um, it was the Arnold. So we're out there, out there at the Arnold. And I mean, I'm whipping the thing around for the competition. We're up on the demo stage. And then we go into the big arena of the Expo Hall. And Kelly 
and I are up there doing a demo for the entire place. And I mean, I'm just trying my best to keep myself together so I'm worn out. But it was funny because Paul, he's like, what is that? I'm like, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to <laughs> massacre what it is to do this thing. And I, I promise I will get better. And so I, I do, and I have. And it's been the greatest compliment to my kettlebell sport training, which at first I wasn't so you know, gung-ho to get and attack it and get so much training with it in because I was concerned it was going to be a detriment. Right. It's still, you know, it was in my head that yeah. I, I got to reserve my strength for this. No, 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 no. It is without a doubt the, uh, the answer for so many people, and especially in the realm of the addicts goes from three pounds. So somebody who can't do anything can do something with this thing. And now Don's got it that it can come up to 50 for all the monsters who want to get up there on the platform and, and wrangle this thing and do the competition. So I'm a medical exercise specialist that really pertain to, you know, everybody in between and what the versatility of this tool means. And uh, I, I use it religiously, and I think everyone should look all across, men, women, young, older, uh, the gamut. It's very applicable to everyone's needs. Right. So let's go into that. So what, in your opinion, what's the mace really, really good for? For someone who's oh just Oh, my listening? goodness. So the, it, the first premise that I come up with is like, wait a second, we never got to lift weights behind our heads, right. behind our body. Uh, and that's the concept, although it's not actual, you know, the opposite side of what we all do forward, but it is the answer to this forward hunched, internally rotated world that's now emerged from all the devices and where the positions that we're in. This aspect of being able to bring something back there was enormous to me. It was a light bulb that went off. And the lever action of it is beneficial to creating the space that we need. So we get space in that socket as opposed to all that tightening and distortion. And we get strengthening that's equal throughout all the rotator cuff parts because when you, you know, initially there's, there's really low level steps that must be taken safety above and beyond all. And we don't want people just jumping up there and thinking, Hey, I can do that. And we've run across people that do, but we, you know, quickly want to get hold of them and take them along and to get the feel of fixing some things first and then move on to where it emerges that you can keep constant resistance. So when you've got these groupings of muscles that need to be fully engaged throughout that and an equal amount of force around the circles and rotations that we make. There's not another stimulus that can be provided by another, well, some, like the Bulgarian bag, for instance. Right. Um, I also have done knowing and, and learning the vintage dumbbell swing. So a huh. um, dumbbell swing and then the vintage barbell swing but still, you know, the barbell swing comes up and around mostly in front. The clubs are also something that come to a degree behind us, but not with that amount of length of the handle as the mace presents to get us to really manage that torque and right. manage that force and incorporate this, I call solidification of all of our muscles you have things interconnecting and firing in sequences that, mo that motion demands when you move this thing. So uh, th that's, I mean, above and beyond all the things. I do a lot of stuff with rehab facilities. Uh, I definitely have nine out of 10 people always coming in with shoulder concerns or conditions. Yeah, yeah. So to be prepared for that and know how to use the thing in that sense. And then if people see the big picture of, I might want to get up there and perform a 10 to 2 on a competition. You know, it, it's, it's something also, again, to strive for. That's so awesome. I hope that someone comes up with like a rehab style, like ebook or, or a course or something when it comes to mace. Because I've heard a lot of people talking about ma We're doing it. mace with, there we go. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, AdXRX is 
a category in the basis of the training and the use of the tool because again that's what i saw immediately i said okay you can take just this handle and we're good and then for somebody to be able to grow with 10 different settings and strive to inch by inch with two and a half pounds uh gradually build upon that but it's very important it's very important to know the stages and the positions and what cueing so yeah definitely and again i call one of my courses uh computeritis to fight computeritis and that's wow. definitely something everybody needs i know i knew it right away you know always with the head down and i have herniated discs in my neck so oh, it's really important to get this uprightness and openness for the reach behind us nothing else I, I really can't see something else bringing it like a bulgarian bag also it's not really convenient that that length of the mace is really great and now the the addicts oh my gosh the mid do i have it here i do i have them all up here today yeah yeah the middle range arc that don calls it is wonderful there are distinctive difference for purposes so we started off with the long one and it has the ball at the end because in competition, you kind of don't want this thing flying out of your hand. So there's a little bit of a stopper down there. Right. The streamlined design of it also for the size of the handle is more akin to bamboo, like a gada, and it's faster. We want to work on like speed, not so slow with the big bulkiness when we're in competition. And then when you're in competition, everybody's got the standard same handle, but you know, it's it's easy enough to put somebody in a category of 15, 20 pounds, 25, 50 pounds, and the same units and equipment. So when you, know, when you talk about that versatility, it's fantastic. Right. Everybody, the, the arc is, again, another fine stepping stone. People can start right away with mace, just easier with the arc, yeah, yeah. rather than the very long mace. And but either way you're you're going to be directed and yes we are certainly all about the education so i am a senior director that i'm helping with the organizational aspect of this education and programming whether it's through the certification whether it's through demos workshops um, and seminars and then yes we also want to have the information available to disperse all over online i do quite a bit of online training and virtual training like for instance this is uh jordan i'm the international coach of jordan with mona bitar at kettlebell sport and wow. we did that from one end of the world to the other and took her to the platform and you know it went so well now she's really taking off with establishing kettlebell sport in jordan and when i went out to meet her when we competed in jerusalem i grabbed a mace put it in a duffel bag and took it on a plane and handed it over to her so she's got the first addicts that's over there in jordan wow. so she incorporates it into her training and training with some of the people over there but we've we've got a lot of people that are catching on to it it's different it's fun and for the most part, it can be safe. We, again, just have to be cautious of how people perceive what they're seeing as easy. When, when, we, when we do it, look, if you look at my stuff way back, it was horrible, and I could have hurt myself potentially. <laughs> but, I mean, I was, I, was, I was a little more reserved, but it was wacky. But yeah. we, so learning from that and knowing that we want to be sure people have the right information on how to go about to use this tool, it can be a huge benefit. And I like it because you could take it with you easily. It's highly portable. It's right. definitely portable. People should be out in the parks and working with it. They can be out in their yard as long as you've got the ceiling high, <laughs> right. you know, indoors, you don't want to poke any holes in the walls. <laughs> That's awesome. So you have a huge background in competition. Let's say there's women listening to this right now. What type, what tips can you give them if they're going to, if they're going to try to get into competition? How do we sign up for competition? Okay. The competition is beginning to grow. And while we have it uh, attached to kettlebell sport and those competitions, it's a standalone competition or it can be connected 
to anything. We also want to work on establishing some online because we tested that out and we did that with a course we did initially. We did a test initially to do a week by week live training with a handful of people who grabbed some uh, addicts, maces, and clubs. And at the end of it, it culminated with uh, a competition online and you had to submit your video and see how it uh, turned out. And we gave away a prize. So, but, but in person, you know, certainly we want more gyms, facilities, and centers to be involved with the training aspect and gaining the exposure. Anyone though can host and have a competition, hold, hold a competition. I mean, even like a 5k, if there was a 5k, we could hold a competition. Right. And I think those are the more unique places to think about because these people are going to be open. They're going to be intrigued. They're athletes to a certain degree doing something and in actuality to give them some relief from their legs in their training. Cause I, I did a lot of running. I don't anymore, but I can get out there and I actually ran a Spartan super wow. after the day I did a kettlebell competition and I took a uh, third place in my age group in the elite category. I mean, I was astounded because I never took one footstep outside to run. So the activity that we get from these motions and movements with our arms and the close proximity of our, our heart in the periphery of our, our cardiovascular system is a different stimulus. And then again, you're getting rest for your legs, but this demand on the fast turnover has a better uh, advancement of your cardiovascular levels. So that's what's really cool about it. And anybody that swings that around and gets cardio from a different way, you're still going to know how to run and right. your capacity is, is just improved. So yes, at, at different venues, we can expo it, we can demo it, we can get into um, athletic, athletic sports of all nature and kind of put a, put, put a little sideshow. <laughs> yeah. It's just like it was in the beginning. This, you know, the circus was the place where you saw kettlebells and where you saw the strong man and the, and the feats of strength with the barbells and dumbbells. Um, we're working on, what is it? The, um, the games, the, uh, where the, the Scottish games, the, what are they called? Is it the Highland games? The Highland games. We've, we've tried to approach and speak to the people with the Highland games because it seems a fitting yeah. uh, event to add to it um, or any of maybe the more thing, the things that crop up and the more trendy uh, modern styles of competing, you know, to add that into it, it can be a possibility. Yes. Right. Though women, women, I, I, I think um, some of the things about women doing this is the rhythm and the movement and the hip action that sometimes gets lost on other people uh, that tend to be a little more stiffer here. You, you do have to work with this. You do have to get certain undulation through the entire body and as subtle as it may be. You don't want to be all over the place. That's how I was in the beginning. <laughs> it's a little too much, you know, <laughs> hip and dancing. But it can be, I swear, it's a zen or a massage. It's like sanity time. You know, you can immerse yourself. You can put on some, you know, radical tunes or some mellow stuff or whatever and just get into a zen-like state because it's so rhythmic and it's, and it's settling to us. And, and in the manner of releasing what it can in this region of our thoracic tie up and all the tension that leads up and into the neck. I think that's where the key is. A lot of women are under a lot of stress. So it's a stress reliever. Most of the people that I put it into their hands, they enjoy it. It's, it's challenging at first. And after the first two minutes and, and when they put it down, they, they, they often ask, can I really be feeling a difference or something? I noticed something Yeah. Um, a week or two into it. And, it's definitely finding uh, relief and, and you're, you're a little more relaxed and you have, you know, an attitude of anticipating to do that and have fun with it. 
That's awesome, man. God, I think I think you've been like one of the one of my favorite guests here. Like oh, your, thank you. your details are all, like spot on. So like I did a demo, I think it was this past Saturday with the maze. And it was funny because I was like, okay, does anyone want to participate? And like everyone seems to be a little intimidated by the mail. Oh, yeah. <laughs> in my area, like does that happen with you? Like, like uh, how do you get around that? Oh, yes. And so, so, some of it, it's a scary thing. It's, it's a scary thing, this big chunk of steel <laughs> and, and how, again, going behind people's heads. I tend to start people there and say just pendulum it back and forth let's see let's see you know if we can get you started there with that sway and again you know it's, it's just it's kind of it brings people's guard down because new is just scary in and of itself this thing is big it's a weapon it's going to hit me in the head it's like the first thing that people are, are thinking so in the manner of you have to let go to use this you know you, you can't be holding on for dear life and managing it with this is what a lot of people like to do you know with their, yeah, their hands their arms it. yeah like definitely continually muscling it so when we you know move with it there's this motion it's a, it's motion emotion and motion so cool it's back here to start and when we just get someone to get that pendulum and come around to the front there's so much more at ease and go, oh, all right. You know, I can manage this, I can do this. So I really, I start from behind a lot of the time to give people and kind of gain a sense of, of evaluation of what they've got going on here. Because some people have cement in these traps and the shoulders, it's so built up and, and just jammed. But it really can be relief for them. You and know, it could possibly be not from like sitting in front of a desk. Sometimes I feel like if you're doing CrossFit and you're doing like a lot of heavy barbell work, I'm assuming they're real tense here too. Cause I actually had uh, my coach try a mace for the first time and he's a CrossFit coach and he's like, Oh my God, this feels so freaking good. Like they actually get a release from it too. Right? Definitely. Definitely. I, I talked to quite a few, there, there's a lot of colleagues that own CrossFit and people that I know do CrossFit. They tremendously can benefit. I have a certification coming up at the end of the month in New Jersey for one of the predominant CrossFits in South Jersey. They are so excited. This is going to bring such relief. And I went down there to visit Chris Ascari and just bring the stuff to let him see it and come down to see his place and go down visit with the dog. <laughs> and we had a blast because again, in the first five minutes of just him grabbing each one, the club, the mid size, the long one, and just kind of, you know, not even getting into a full fledged motion of constant. He said, I feel so good <laughs> just on picking them up and trying each one out and gaining a sense of how they're used. I, can't you know say enough about the remedy that this presents for people and that's the cool thing is it's, yeah. it's a whole package deal you have something that's so substantial for people that have had problems you know look don came up with the addicts because he had tremendous years of benching benching my best bench was 200 and when i put that 200 up and i went you know, something that doesn't feel so good. I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> I kind of, I, I stepped away from benching and it coincided with a lot of, you know, the kettlebell stuff. I once was only injured on a bicep tendon. It wasn't from benching, but more so a lot of uh, mounted up boxing stuff that I was doing at the time. I have not been injured since I picked up a kettlebell in 2008. This is 10 years later. I have not sustained injury i have not worsened the conditions that were existing like i said i have herniated discs in my neck i have no meniscus in one of my knees the torn on the other um compression in my back i've never stood straighter and uh you know felt stronger again in a complete sense of strength and i've never lifted and, and worked out as heavy as i do i'm 54 and a half <laughs> it gets better all the time. It really, truly does these things that I do that I've, I've come to participate in. And honestly, I, 
snatching and swinging the mace is what I've been doing because at the level and where I'm going to compete, that's what I concentrate my efforts on. Every once in a while, I do things for enjoyment and stuff like that. But I definitely can feel the difference of my body completely connected because your tendons and your ligaments, your muscle are receiving an equal amount. You're not overblowing this. And look, I don't, I don't really do bicep curl. <laughs> but you're not overblowing this beyond what this is getting when you just isolate and you, you know, bodybuilding, if you want to be a bodybuilder, okay. Um, weightlifting, if you want to be a powerlifter, weightlifter, okay. But if you want to move, you want motion in your everyday life and then that's going to pay off for anything else that you can put your body through. This I found and I can, I know I can do this till I'm a hundred. That's insane. I know I, you know, I, I recently met Mr. Macefan too. Last month I went out there to do a workshop with him and he said, the oh, same yeah. thing. he said, even if someone told me the mace uh, was like the worst thing for your body, I would continue to mace. Look right. at me. Um, you know, he talks about that. Look at my age. And I mean, he, he thinks it helped him like tremendously. Definitely. Definitely. And, and when you look at Don, Don will attest to the fact, and he has all of his workouts that since he started with the club, that's what he uses for training. The guy's, his body looks incredible. So yeah. when you're looking for a full body workout, it, it's, it's true. It can give that. Uh, it definitely has the power to, again, give a stimulus from head to toe. You, you're, you're reaching out there and up there around with this thing at the end of your hand, even with more length, and your feet are rooted, the ground force, the balance, the stimulus, um, again, as we're getting older, we need that. We can't have this separateness. We can't be sitting people on machines trying to do stuff. That's not the real world and life. You have to get up and down the stairs. You have to get in and out of the car. You have to be able to manage this thing that we're given. And we can't give up any of the function. One thing Anthony DeLulio impressed upon me that I will take with me forever. He said, don't skip anything. Don't skip anything. Find a way to do it. And that was never more apparent when we were instructing for the Mace Fit certification in Florida. With Frank, we had Vaughn Chambers there, who's an amputee. She's a power lifter of extraordinary uh, measures. She... Wow wanted to do the Turkish getup. And I said, okay, let's go through it and let's watch and work and, and work this through. And we all collectively as the group participants there worked with her. And when she noticed and said, well, this isn't going to work because I can't put the leg, the, the, the prosthetic, she took it off and we said, all right, let's work for it, work with it from there. And we managed to have her just she doesn't kneel on the leg. She comes around and then she has to manage to come up from that position. The very next week when she was at the beach and she had shot a video of her going into the water and the person shooting the video was telling her, watch out for the drop off, watch out for the drop off. And sure enough, she hit the drop off and she went down. Now she went down and when you watched her get up, she got up exactly as we modified and taught her from the manner of the Turkish get up. Wow. So to me, again, we have people that have problems up here. Yes, they might not be able to do something initially. We find a way as a, you know, there's, there's a protocol. And if there's a pre-progression, there's progressions, you know, ABCs. Uh, you don't go to Z. Like every, yeah, I'd like to get up there on the, you know, platform and swing it like wild crazy. Okay, but wait. Uh, you know, let's, let's take this a, a piece at a time. And if you can't do this, let's find out how we can get you there and, and work it that way. So that's important. That's really important. Don't give up on yourself for something that might be an obstacle or a challenge. Find the way or the modification that's going to help. Wow. That's mind blowing. I love that right there. Yeah. We can't let don't stop. You got to keep going with that mace, right? But obviously, oh, yeah. you know, do it the safe way and start. I mean, what, what do you recommend for people that like don't have access to a mace coach? Cause it's, it's brand new. Like, do you recommend they like talk to you directly? Who can they hit up? Like, Oh, definitely. Like, definitely. Yes. I mean, again, 
online programming, we've, we've run these tests. We've run these little groups and workouts on a, on a week-to-week virtual basis. Virtual is nowadays just like being in person. So the most important thing is that you've got to get your hands on, I suggest an addict. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm no, sorry. I'm, I'm very no. partial. The yeah. tools and the things that I use, I, I pick and I use and I recommend things that I have my eye on to notice exceptional, number one, value. The addicts is 10 different adjustments. Right. If you bought a mace, they're usually $99. That's $1,000. Even if they're 50, that's 500. The addicts is 250, sometimes 200 when it's on sale. So look, right. you can't go wrong with that thing and you're going to have room to grow. But that's what you need. You need yeah, to yeah. be able to, you can't, you can't use one weight. Do you use one set barbell weight? No, you have a weight, you have a barbell and there's plates that go on the bar because you're going to get stronger. You're going to get better. And it's, it's a practice and a progression. There's right. no progression in one fixed weight. And I don't know, I don't, I don't have room for 10, 20, 30, and 40 of those things. Right. I, you know, it's tough enough with kettlebells. There's no way to get an adjustable one of those though. So, <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it's, it's, a versatile tool. Uh, what, what was the first <laughs> where we started with this? The question? Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, I was just asking like for people who, you know, are just getting started. Oh, where like, people? Like where can people find right. resources and stuff? So, like, how can they contact you? Right. All right. So, so we have, first of all, we have a vintage strength training.com. VintageTrainTraining.com is getting all the content put into it that encompasses all these types and styles of things and obviously the mace and the club. Vintage Strength Training certification is the start of the use of your club and your mace. It's the only dual certification that we've offered so far. So this way you get the companionship of how both of these things complement and interact and again the progression. So Vintage Strength Training Adex Club and Mace certification is for trainers, instructors, personal people that want to know better how to use it. We do schedule dates. We're planning on the 2019 calendar. We're looking for facilities all throughout the country that want to be hosts. Now that is somewhat of a precursor to Mace Fit. So Mace Fit, it does require some familiarity, usage, and identifying ways to move a mace or the club. And that is a pre-programming package that we can take instructors right up into a facility and give them all the plan that they need on an ongoing basis, quarter to quarter, of exactly how to take it to the um, public. Right. Um, but again, for the public, we want to do some more with online. We want to get this into facilities. So again, Mace Fit can be taught to people and they can get a sense of it. The Vintage Strength Games is the Facebook page where you'll find the information. And the American Kettlebell Alliance is the organization that's hosting the Vintage Strength Games Mace 10 to 2. Actually, we have this weekend in Vegas at the Olympia the very next one that's coming up. Right. So this Saturday, yes, there will be a competition. And then at the Arnold is the other one. The two very big ones. Along the lines of a few of the uh, local competitions, there are definitely dates and places and locations that we offer it there. But again, we're welcoming the inquiries from facilities, center owners, fitness centers, training centers, clubs, uh, to come on board and start the, you know, this training in the club in the mace and start to offer some either, you know, we'll do workshops, we'll do seminars, we'll do the certification, we'll bring in mace fit. It's a licensing program. So this way people can join the forces of the way and the style and the manner in which we are showing people how to safely do this. And the package of you can get to a um, competition and certainly put yourself to the test. A lot of people are catching on through some of those ways. But also keep uh, up with adxclub.com and Don on uh, YouTube. The Vintage Strength Games, um, again, is the Facebook page. Vintage Strength Training 
is really the, the, all of it brought together. So, I mean, for, oh, and you mentioned Kettlebell Sport USA yes. is the manner by which I take and train in kettlebells and kettlebell sport. Again, it's, it's the same. People don't have to do the competition, but I can prepare them that they'd be able to step right up onto the platform at some date in the future. So a lot of these things, you know, it's a compliment. They go hand in hand and we want to bring it to the masses. All the people are eligible and online training. We will be announcing a lot more with the interactive or online training program that we're going to have. That, that's really fantastic because that's important and people can do it. They get a hold of the tool. That's what I was starting to say. Ordering an addict, it comes with some preliminary training and uh, the basis and addicts essentials. And then we have stepping stones of where you want to go from there. Or people can do one-on-one -on -one training if they wanted to virtually. Wow. That's amazing because I think this is like the first company that actually bundles up some training along with the base, right? Well, that's what we wanted to do. We, you know, we, we, we started to take in like all of our, our, you know, attributes of how we can collaborate and contribute to how is this going to work? Cause it, it kind of came backwards. We went to the competition and then we're saying, okay, well, like you said, people are, I don't want to do that. I don't know. Right. But well, so we had to teach people and teaching people, but we had to teach trainers how to safely because when we're just all standing up there, we're whipping the thing around and people think, oh, I'll just look at that video and start doing it. Wait mm -hmm. a minute, you know? So there is, again, the progressions. Um, the, oh, what was one of the other things? Oh, but on my site, my site happens to be ValeriePalowski.com. And this way, it's an easy access point where I can put a majority of things for simple. I, I do offer, again, the virtual training and the online that uh, people can get from there. They can get the club in the maze with addicts from there from me. And I'm always glad to give people an initial consultation for free. The assessment and evaluation first of how people move, that can be done, interactive. I mean, similar to the way that we're doing this, modern technology is right. fantastic. Oh, yeah. And, you know, people might start off with a stick, a broomstick. Uh, we can manage with certain elements and, again, bridge that up on into when they get their tool, their addicts delivered. Right on. Well, oh my God, I, I think listeners are really going to find this episode like extremely jam packed with amazing content. I'm not going to lie. This is like Great. really good. And it's awesome to have a woman trainer really get down with it. Um, I know that the last one was Kelly and Kelly uh, Manzoni and she was freaking awesome too. Yes. Um, so, okay. So let's go over where people can find you before we ended. And do you, if you have any free resources, go ahead and shout that out. I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. That cut out. Oh, I said, if you uh, have anywhere online where people can find you, go ahead and let them know about that. And if you have any free resources or anything like that, you can go ahead and let them know. All right. The uh, Kettlebell Sport USA Facebook page has um, quite a bit, and that's where I've been putting out, or, or Vintage Strength Training, Vintage Strength Training v Facebook page. The... Um, ValeriePalowski.com contains uh, a, a few things and access to things. I'm bringing more together to go into VintageStrengthTraining.com. The content isn't in there quite yet, so fully okay. to uh, fire that up. But um, the AddictsClub.com, definitely. MaceFit.com, you can get on that site, and there's lots of information and material and all about the Mace Fit program, certification, licensing, and that should be, I mean, if somebody wanted to contact me directly, uh, valpaw1, V-A-L-P-A-W number one at gmail.com. 
giving away right my on. private one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's no, like, that's my personal one. There's all these other ones, websites and all this other, but just send it there. I'll probably look at it there first. The listeners get the exclusive email <laughs> by complete random coincidence. All right. Well, I mean, thank you. Thank you for being on here. Um, I appreciate it. I mean, so far, uh, I keep saying this in every episode, but I feel so grateful and blessed that everyone's been like, hell yeah, I'll be on your podcast. So that's really awesome. And um, honestly, just thank you. Oh, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to talk to you. And I'm glad we got to meet each other, see each other virtually. But one yeah. day we will be swinging side by side. That'll be yes, cool. Yes, that'd be awesome. Yes. All right. Well, thank you again. And may the universe always flow with you. Thank you.